Hello there ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? It's Alexander Hilly123 here and it's time for a new video. And as you can see from the title, today is my top 10 video games of the decade 2000 to 2009. And last couple of months, I think it was last November, December, I did my top 10 video games and music albums of the decade 2010 to 2019. And I said that early this year, 2020, just for the laughs, I would do my top 10 video games and music albums of the decade 2000 to 2009. Now, you don't need to worry, I'm not going to be plugging these out all the time and doing 80s, 90s, blah, blah, blah. I've already done my top 10 50s, uh, sorry, top 10 50 albums of the 90s list. This is just going to be two separate videos and then we're not going to do another list video for a while. Although I did say I'd do my favourite B-sides, music B-sides. Uh, I said that when I did my video for my favourite music covers. But yeah, after today, next Friday, today is Friday, the 7th of February. Next Friday, on Valentine's Day, I will be doing my top 10 music albums list of the decade 2000, 2009. But yeah, don't get used to these, because there's not going to be tons of them. Anyway, today I'm going to show my honourable mentions first, ladies and gentlemen. Silent Hill 2, honourable mention. I've already done this video, by the way, and it lasted way too long, so I'm going to talk less about the honourable mentions. Max Payne 1, both released in 2001, by the way. Broken Sword, The Sleeping Dragon, 2003. Fear, 2005. Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. Splinter Cell, Pandora Tomorrow, my favourite classic Splinter Cell game. I think that was 2003 or 4. This is the Ultimate Edition, but I'm showing off this um, to showcase Gears of War, the original game, back in 2006. Doom 3, the big fucking gun edition, emphasis on the fucking, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, baby! Released in 2005 initially, I think. Condemned Criminal Origins, one of the best survival horror games ever made. Released, I think, in 2005 again. And Saints Row 2. Released in 2008. Hopefully the Saints Row games get better again because they've gone a bit too silly. This was made the same year as Grand Theft Auto 4. And ladies and gentlemen, I think it's a better game. I absolutely loved Saints Row 2. And 3 as well. But 2 was the best Saints Row game for me. I really loved it. And had an absolute blast playing it back in 2012. All those are my honourable mentions. Now I have to say before we begin with my actual top 10 list. That there aren't as many here in this... I don't know, I thought there'd be more games. I thought, bloody hell, this is all the games I played. And I realised, no, I did play more. But this decade, I started it leaving primary school, starting high school, and ended the decade um, at college. So I I guess I was too busy to play video games. And I think this last decade, uh, the 90s, I pl as a young lad, on Mega Drive and the PS1 era, I played more games than this decade. So it's quite interesting. And at times... Because I was big with football games as well. Um, I just played like one game for months on end. But uh, yeah, there we have it. Anyway, coming in at number 10, ladies and gentlemen. I've got the collection to showcase. But it is the first game. It is Bioshock. Released in 2007. An incredibly beautiful world. The world of Rapture under the sea. And I think I prefer Bioshock 1 to 2. It's not that I didn't enjoy being a big daddy in number two, but I enjoyed being Jack, I think his name was, in the first game, just a normal bloke. In amongst all that chaos, you got fucking Atlas Land, you know what I'm fucking saying? Uh, and Andrew Ryan and all those crazy, incredible characters that are in that game. Uh, fantastic audio logs, great game world. The, the game looks utterly beautiful, regardless of the version you're playing. I want to earth did they make the game look so good back then it's incredible it's truly incredible 2007 ladies and gentlemen the gunplay and mechanics are a lot of fun and of course harvesting or rescuing the big sisters there's so much to do and it's a big linear game the kind of game that i love bioshock one is a masterpiece i as time goes by enjoy infinite less and less i like two and i'm interested to see what happens with the new game but for me the first game is still the best and it is a true masterpiece in at number nine, ladies and gentlemen, is another game that it gets better with age. I didn't really say that with Bioshock because I just think it stays the same. But I don't know what it is about this game. It is just getting better with age. It's Metal Gear Solid 2, The Sons of Liberty. Not Kojima's biggest fan these days. I think he peaked with Metal Gear Solid 3. 
But I remember playing this game back in 2002, very early 2002 when it came out, and being incredibly disappointed with it and annoyed. Who the fuck is this blonde prick? Kojima, what are you playing at? Uh, but by the end of completing it and in the years that followed, I gained an appreciation for it. I think the gameplay is probably better than Metal Gear Solid 1 on the PlayStation 1. Although Metal Gear Solid 1 is you know, the highest tier. I'm, I'm of the opinion, as many people are, that that game is one of the best games ever made. Probably one of my top 10 games of all time. Uh, but Metal Gear Solid 2, it ages very well, story-wise. People say that Kojima prophesied a lot of what was to come in the years after this game. And I guess he did, I don't think... But, uh, no, there's some pretty interesting story elements. And the gameplay is fun. The bosses are insane. Voice acting is great, uh, but cheesy at the same time. Story uh, can be nonsensical at times. At the end with Metal Gear Arsenal is so it's kind of unnerving as well there's a real darkness to that when it all goes here while you realize campbell's not real and you don't know what's real and i remember being really disturbed by that and i think that's what kojima wanted and he nailed it anyway we've got two football videos or football games i should say in this list ladies and gentlemen and the first is pro evolution soccer 4 released in 2004 and there was a time ladies and gentlemen from I'd say ISS 98 to ISS 64, when the Pro Evolution Soccer series was untouchable up until about Pro Evolution Soccer 6 on the PS2. Then, as they head into the Xbox 360 PS3 era, for me, they've just never been able to capture what made these games so great. Gameplay is immense, the graphics obviously have aged, but if you play the PS2 version with a component cable instead of a SCART cable, it still looks pretty good. There's a lot of editing features with this game as well. Obviously, not proper kits. Man blue, man red, Liverpool, uh, Merseyside red, Merseyside blue, you know, shit like that. But you could just edit it in yourself. I did it. I remember when I bought this, I listened to music and I just chilled out and spent a whole night editing the entire teams. And guess what? I was happy after that. A true masterpiece, Pro Evolution Soccer, the old games are amazing. And I know there's a lot of people who will agree with me who grew up with them. Wipe the floor with FIFA back in the day, in my opinion. Anyway, number seven, ladies and gentlemen. I made a bit of a mistake here, because I have got Uncharted 4, um, A Thief's End. But as you will know, this was released in 2016. That's the wrong decade. There were only two Uncharted games released in the decade 2000-2009. And I am talking about here, uh, number seven. Uncharted 2. I cannot remember the title of that one. I don't know if it's Among Thieves or The Deception. I think it's Deception. Or it might be Among Thieves. Fortune is the first game. But I think Uncharted 2 is the best Uncharted game. I think the pacing is the best in the series. Breaking up that constant gunplay with the puzzles. And I think the puzzles in the series are the best because they're not the hardest, they're not the trickiest, but they're not as easy as they were in one. The characters are great. The game looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, Nolan North, uh, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't lose back then, could he? I'm sure he'll be playing a character in the new Last of Us 2 which, game, which comes out in a few months, just like he did in the first game. And I think that's one of his best performances, that evil fucker, uh, that cannibal in that game, because it didn't sound like him, and it was a really great performance. But uh, yeah, Uncharted, I love the series. It definitely needs to end now. Let's not keep it going. You know, The Lost Legacy was a nice game because it wasn't as big as Uncharted 4 and it was a different character, but that's where the series really should end. I think they will as well because obviously Naughty Dog now, were they going to go after The Last of Us? They could return to an older series or do something entirely new. But I'll always love the Uncharted games, but Uncharted 2 is my favourite. In at number 6 ladies and gentlemen got a bit of goosebumps now going on got a bit of goosebump action because it is time for Left 4 Dead released in 2008 and quite simply one of the best games of all time and I'm as good as certain the only game in this list which I'm thinking of multiplayer as I talk about it and I really don't want to imagine a world with those Left 4 Dead servers going down because this game it's fun to play with a CPU, but it undeniably is better to play with real people. And I don't like playing games with real people. It's only this and Rocket League these days which I play online and have done in the last couple of years. But there are so many things that people take for granted with Left 4 Dead. 
the little audio cues. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, there's a special infected around. You hear them grumbling or growling or doing something in the distance. Playing headphones with this game makes a big difference. Um, the gunplay was serviceable and fun. I prefer Left 4 Dead 1 to Left 4 Dead 2. That's why it's in this list, ladies and gentlemen. Left 4 Dead 2 was only released a year after, so it could have been chosen instead. But no, I do prefer Left 4 Dead 1. I prefer the campaigns. I prefer the characters. And yeah, I just absolutely adore it. And those finales were legendary. Just escaping at the last minute when you're nearly dead. A lot of adrenaline when you're playing on a higher difficulty. Ex expert difficulty is ridiculous ridiculous absolutely ridiculous for me playing online with other people who are competent at the game on advanced is the best and yeah i've had some incredible experiences in this game and i'll always want to go back and replay it and valve come on we need a third game so get to it but another developer ladies and gentlemen who've fallen by the wayside they used to be gods gods of the wasteland this is fallout 3 showing off the game of the year edition here it doesn't really matter because fallout 3 is one of the best games ever made and yet it is a glitchy buggy mess at times there's issues all over the place even back in 2008 the gameplay and the graphics weren't the best so why is it in this list why is it regarded as one of the best games of all time because of the kinds of things that bethesda with fallout 4 and bethesda as a company in the last five or six years uh, failed to do is because the amount of freedom you can have with this game is amazing you know when you get out of what's it called the vault and before well not not even uh, after megaton before megaton you could just go in any direction and get fucked up by level 30 enemies you know what i mean bad karma good karma there's so much you can do in this game i've still never done a bad karma playthrough never i've completed about four times the dlcs are fun and serviceable but not amazing I've done them all, apart from the one after you complete the game. Hmm, that could be done this year, 2020. The audio and the atmosphere of this game is amazing as well. It's really gritty and dark and engrossing. And the quests are just a lot more fun than Fallout 4. Fallout 4 was fun. The gameplay was a lot better, but... The quests were dull as dishwater. It's about as simple as that. But yeah, Fallout 3 is amazing. And one of these days, I hope, if I could just stop time now, I would just play Fallout New Vegas because I've still never played that game fully and properly. Oh, well, there we go. Anyway, in at number four, ladies and gentlemen, it is the best in the series. But I think a lot of people will be going to Miami. But for me, I'm all about the West Side. It's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas coming in. At number four and i remember back in the day at high school all my mates were talking about, oh i completed vice city and i was like mm, i didn't complete it me i couldn't a few missions i was struggling on perhaps i can't remember where exactly but we were so hyped about this game it was my second to last year of high school and i made sure i purchased it on the day it came out and i completed this quicker than nearly anyone in my school so you know I just played it for like two weeks non-stop after it came out. October 2004, I remember it vividly. And this game, it's just a true sandbox masterpiece. I love the setting. I love the era, you know, 1992. You put the radio on. You go between my favourite two radio stations anyway, Radio X and Radio Santos. That mix of hip-hop and alt-metal and grunge. You got some... Helmet, you got some Stone Temple Pilots, you got some Alice in Chains, Soundguard and shit popping off. Turn the uh, channel over, you've got uh, Ice Cube, NWA, Two Pack, shit like that. Absolutely amazing. I think the quests, well, missions, not quests, missions are fantastic. That fucking hippie on the front, I remember him, unbelievable. And the map is so big, but this, this introduced it, introduced, sorry, the element of cj having stats sex appeal muscle all that shit going to the gym and some of it was a little bit silly like you could go to the gym spend 10 seconds tapping a button and he was muscular but maybe you needed to do it for a mission it was very streamlined you'd get hungry as well and you just always just <laughs> every day go to mcdonald's or clucking bell whatever it was called it was silly but for its time it was amazing and 
yeah, the list of characters are incredible. Big Smoke, Sweet, Rider, the, the blind Japanese fella. Was he Chinese? I can't remember. Was he Woozy? The guy, uh, Zero, with his missions with the little flying planes. Oh my lord, they were tough. But yeah, I think these days with Rockstar, Dan Hauser just left Rockstar a few days ago. I said it before, I'll say it again. I think probably Red Dead Redemption 1 was the peak with Rockstar gameplay-wise. I think GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, it's just too dull. And it's more like a story than a game for me these days. That's the way I feel because there's no arcadey nature and silliness to it. Obviously, the, the, the writing... And the production values are astonishing, as they should be with how much money Rockstar make. But um, no, for me, San Andreas is Rockstar's crowning achievement. And it's a masterpiece, my fourth favourite video game of the decade. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about another football game. The game equivalent of Crack Cocaine. And I've been saying it for many years, and other football fans will tell you the same. Because anyone who played this back in the day... You just couldn't play one more game. You had to play many more games before you somehow turned the laptop, turned the telly, sorry, turned the PC off, whatever. Because Championship Manager 01 or 2, I've only got the disc by the way, is a true colossal masterpiece. And it's just a management simulator, it's just a spreadsheet, it's just a database, but the balance between um, the depth and the playability of this game was just astonishing. This is made by Sports Interactive, who these days make the Football Manager games. Championship Manager became Football Manager back in 2004, when I think Sports Interactive split from IDOS, the publisher, and IDOS were like, well, fuck off, we'll go keep on with the Football Manager, sorry, the Championship Manager games under another studio. They did for a few years, but they weren't as good. And these days, the Football Manager games, for me, are way too in depth but i really really love the mid to late 2000s football managers as well and you know i'm currently playing touch 2020 but it's an interesting balance because these days what sports interactive do is they said this is the streamlined version of football manager yet for me personally parts are not in depth enough and other parts are too in depth and finding that right balance for everybody as adults mainly these days because i sure as hell in my lifestyle couldn't fit in the full fat version football manager in Norway. It's about finding that right balance. This game, for a lot of people these days, wouldn't have enough depth, but it's still realistic. The replayability is incredible. The immersion of being a football manager, whether it be a low league level or the World Cup, Champions League, some of the biggest clubs in the world, it was astonishing. It's still replayable and it's a masterpiece beyond proportion, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, the top two now, I think the second game in this series was number two in my list, 2010 to 2019. And the first game, released in 2008, is number two on this list. It is, of course, Dead Space. And whereas I don't think Dead Space 2 has aged much at all in the nine years since it was released, oh my lord, this game probably has dated a little bit. I think the kinesis and the stasis don't always work the way that they should, but it still looks beautiful for its time. Kind of similar graphical style, although it's third person. I always do think that this game got a bit of Bioshock influence. Obviously, Resident Evil 4 influence massively. Uh, and then System Shock 2. You mould all those together and you got Dead Space. And I remember playing this game for the first time, and I spoke about it for years, and... I just don't understand how it escaped me up until 2014. I only played the Dead Space games from 2014 onwards. It's crazy if when this was released in 2008. But yeah, it, I think the reason this game is so good as a survival horror game is with survival horror, you can't just survive on jump scares alone. But when the jump scares happened in this game, they were so good because we take it for granted now, but the enemies coming through the vents was so unique back then. Uh, from above, from behind you, from the side. You never knew when they were going to jump out. And it was very startling. 
and yeah the game is very truly unsettling the gore is ridiculous the violence the death scenes it is one of the most disturbing games of all time but there's a lot of allure here as well of the marker and why it drives people insane i think it was pretty obvious to a lot of people that nicole who isaac uh, is looking for in the first game is already dead the chapters of the game spell out nicole is dead but yeah, it's just legendary, and I absolutely love the Dead Space series. So many fond memories of the first two games. Of course, my annual fuck you to EA for ruining the third game and for killing the series. It will never come back, no. Not unless they know they can milk it for all it's worth. Another fuck you, EA. Fuck you with my bent, wobbly, inbred northern fingers. Fuck you. I hate you. Anyway, uh, but yeah, Dead Space 1, the guns are great. The audio is incredible. For me, one of the ultimate best games of all time in terms of the sound production. How on earth did they do it? Well, there's a few interesting videos on YouTube about the creation of Dead Space 1 with the main guy. I can't remember what his name is. But uh, yeah, astonishing. What a masterpiece, Dead Space 1. I still prefer the second game, but atmosphere-wise and the setting on that spaceship, the Ishimura, Dead Space is such a special experience. But now, ladies and gentlemen... For number one, I'm changing the rule book up because it's not just one game I'm showing off, it's two. And if you ask me to choose one, well, I would really struggle. Of course, you knew it was coming. It is Resident Evil. But is it Resident Evil 4 or is it Resident Evil Remake? They're both my favourite games of the decade, 2000 to 2009 but for different reasons. Resident Evil Remake is exactly what Resident Evil 2 Remake should have been, in my opinion, and a lot of other Resident Evil fans' opinions. Uh, and Resident Evil 4 changed the whole game up. Gears of War, Dead Space, and quite a few other similar third-person games would have struggled to be made without Resident Evil 4, maybe even the masterpiece that is The Evil Within. Um, Resident Evil 4 changed everything up it was an astonishing experience I remember playing it for the first time the year after it came out and just understanding that I never played anything like this with that camera perspective and just being able to shoot enemies in the face and then the melee you know people talk about Capcom remaking Resident Evil 4 you know I'm saying no to a Code Veronica remake because I don't think that game's good enough to be remade for me Resident Evil 4 is obviously good enough but it doesn't need a remake because it is so good, but also just because you cannot do what Shinji Mikami did in that game. The game is massive. It takes over 20 hours to complete on your first playthrough. It's probably a bit too long, to be honest with you, Resident Evil 4 as a game on your first playthrough. But look at the layout of the map and the, the castle area, the village. There's so many different areas. The... You know, look at the graphics in the HD version. The, the textures are very, very good. Even when you play the original PS2 version, for its time, or the GameCube, I should say, for its time, the textures were amazing. And it's just about Leon rescuing the president's daughter. And then the story goes on from there. And of course, there is some lure into the Las Plagas. But really, story wise, Resident Evil 4 isn't a masterpiece. But gameplay wise, immersion and all that shit, it certainly is. And it's a talking point as well. What is survival horror? And is Resident Evil 4 survival horror? Because Dead Space was inspired by Resident Evil 4. And that is definitely a survival horror game. So why do people say that Resident Evil 4 isn't? For me, it's the fact that it is a quicker paced game. You do get more ammo. And the reason that in that game you get more ammo is the way that the attaché case is. It allows you to get a lot of ammo. There's a lot of upgrades. You can get powerful. The gameplay is very quick paced. And the quick time events obviously not really suited to a survival horror game either. But it doesn't really matter what kind of game it is. It just matters that this is, for me, one of the most important games of all time. Up there with your best Final Fantasies, your Zeldas, your Marios, whatever genre. This is the genre for kind of gory shooters survival horror whatever you want to say and of course remake like i said that is what resident evil remake 2 should have been the camera perspective and just not only an amazing remake but um i don't know what i was going to say they're not only an amazing game but an amazing remake as well yeah <clears throat> because there was like 20 30 percent new areas but then a, a returning player would remember everything from the original game and most things. Shinji, you're a genius and I love you. Thank you very much. But ladies and gentlemen, 
Next Friday, I will be recording and uploading my top 10 music albums of the decade 2000-2009. And then I've got my next vinyl pickups video coming up. New albums from the world of heavy metal grunge. Um, and the singer-songwriter and a bit of electronic as well. And also some gameplay. We've got Resi Free Remake coming up. Doom Eternal, The Last of Us 2. So there's going to be new shit to come. Thanks for watching. See you soon.